Welcome to Morningside Uniting Church. Every time we come before the presence of God, we light this candle to acknowledge Jesus Christ, the light of the world, is here with us. Amen. Now let us worship God. Seeking direction for our lives, we come to worship God. Longing for peace within our lives, we come to worship God. Needing healing within our lives, we come to worship God. Yearning for wholeness in our lives, we come to worship God. Let us pray. Keep us, good Lord, under the shadow of your mercy in this time of uncertainty and distress. Sustain and support the anxious and fearful and lift up all who are brought low that we may rejoice in your comfort knowing that nothing can separate us from your love in Christ Jesus our Lord and Savior. Amen. Since today is Palm Sunday, now let us sing, Ride on, ride on in majesty, as we welcome the coming King, Jesus Christ. Now let us pray the prayer of confession. Let us pray together. Abundant life, freely offering your gifts, we confess that we withhold our plenty from others. Living water surging always, we neither conserve nor share the waters of life. Amazing grace reaching out to all humanity, we confess to indifference to your living word. Yet even to us comes the promise of a never-failing spring of water. Help us, O God, to repent and believe the good news. Amen. Now let us continue to confess in silence. Amen. Hear the good news. The good news is that all who trust in Christ will have their sins forgiven and receive the gift of eternal life. As you hold this faith, I declare that you are set free from all your sins in the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit, to whom be glory forever and ever. Thanks be to God. Today's Bible reading is from the Gospel according to Matthew chapter 21 verses 1 through 11. Matthew chapter 21. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there with her colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, tell them that the Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to the daughter of Zion, See, your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt, placed their cloaks on them, and Jesus sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the Son of David! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest! 
When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? The crowds answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, at the end of this message, you will see whether I made a part or not. So don't go anywhere, stay tuned. As you can see, all the palm branches in the church, and I have one palm branch in here. Today is Palm Sunday, the day when Israel people welcomed Jesus, the King, the Son of God, coming into Jerusalem to claim His throne. So for the average Israel people, they had expectation of the Messiah. When the Messiah comes, he will claim his throne in Jerusalem and he will give Israel people freedom from Roman soldiers and he will rule over them and the world. So it will be much better and blessed for them. In the meantime, those powerful people, local authorities or religious leaders, and people with power, some kind of possession of power, they were afraid of Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the King, the Son of God, coming to Jerusalem because they would lose everything that they had. So, they did their best to stop him from coming to Jerusalem. Well, it's an interesting re reading from today because those Israel people gathering and who cut palm branches and spread over the road, on the road, and those who took up their cloth and their garments and laid on the road for Jesus, and they shouted, Hosanna to the Son of God. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. So two different scenes. First one, Jesus was coming towards Jerusalem. And he met this group of Israel people. Welcoming and shouting and preparing the way for him to come to Jerusalem. And the second scene is this, verse 10. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? The crowds answered. I assume that these are different people. Different people from those welcoming people on his way to Jerusalem. But uh, these people already uh, in Jerusalem, and they answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. One group, they shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. But the second group says, 
Who is he? They answered, He is the prophet from the Nazareth and Galilee. Not from a big city, but it's a small town by the Lake Galilee from north. Even though they were living in the same time, one group saw Jesus as the son of David, the Messiah, the King, and one from heaven above, and the other group saw him just one of the prophet, one of the rabbi, the wise man. In our Christian life, I think the most important thing is the fact and truth and reality is how we see who Jesus is. I think that's a very important question for us to ask. Do I see Jesus as the King, the Son of God? The Son of God and who comes to claim His throne, to rule over, to reign in this world and beyond? Or do I see Jesus as one of good men who does good things, who teaches good teachings? So many Christians believe that Jesus would do good things. And Jesus would do good things for Christians. And He would continue to bless those who bless and those who worship and those who praise His name. It's more like a conditional relationship. But when we think of Jesus as our King, King doesn't have to do a lot of things for people like us. It's not because I did this for you, King, so you should do this for me. That is not the relationship we have with Jesus. Because He's not just one of the prophets. Because He's not just one of the teachers, the wise men. Because He is the Son of God, the Messiah, the King. So I believe the first group of people, they saw Jesus as their King. Obviously, they didn't have many. So they gathered palm branches. Even they took off their cloth to lay on the road for the king. So in our Christian life, do we have that kind of attitude towards Jesus? And do we have that kind of practice in our life? As we follow, as we worship, and as we praise the name of the Lord. What I'm saying is, do we give Jesus Christ our best? Or do we just give to Jesus because we have plenty, so we can give some we have? I think of Cain and Abel in Genesis. They offered their offerings to God. But for Cain's offering, God didn't receive it. But he, but God loved the offering from Abel. And the Bible says, Abel got the first and the best to offer to God. But Cain had some. Cain had some from his harvest. Not the first, not the best, but some from his harvest to offer to God. So when we come to this relationship with God, do we offer the best and the first 
for the glory of God? Or just do we share what we have with God? And as I think of Jesus Christ and His disciples, they were in the temple and they saw a rich man making offerings to God. And obviously he made a big offering. And then later on, there was a widow. Appearance-wise, she didn't look rich at all, but so poor. And she dropped two leptons. Well, which is about, how, how can I say that? Maybe two two dollar coins, four dollars altogether, very small offering. And Jesus and his disciples were watching them making offering to God. And then after that Jesus said, this lady, this widow, made the best offering for the glory of God. Because the rich man offered some he had for the glory of God, but this widow offered everything she had for the glory of God. Well, I believe this widow worked hard to make that two leptons so that she could make offering to God with the money she made. It's a different attitude based on different perspective on who God was in their lives. So same question. Do we offer our best and our first to God? Or do we just share what we have abundantly with God? The two greatest commandments, love God with your heart, with your mind, with your soul, and with your life. So when we love God, it requires everything that we have and everything that we are being offered to God. And also second commandment, love your neighbor as yourself. Which means, don't just say you love your neighbor, but as you love and as you take care of yourself, that's how you love your neighbor. Because your neighbor is part of your life. When it comes to the relationship with God, we cannot give God just some of what we have. Because God gave everything for us. He sent His one and only Son to die for us, for the forgiveness of our sins, so that we may live and have life through Him. So on this Palm Sunday, it's time for us to welcome Jesus coming into our life not as a prophet, but as the King, as the Lord, and as the Savior, who gave everything to save us. And also, on this Palm Sunday, I'd like to invite you to step into this Holy Week, the suffering of Jesus Christ. So that we may find the true meaning and message and voice of God. Why Jesus came. Why He rose. Why He gave us the promise of eternal life. And also the Holy Spirit. Well, I started my message with uh, golf putting, by the way. The green was sponsored by uh, the Wynnum Golf Course, and so it's uh, just want to highlight. And if you want to sponsor this, you know, service, and you're more than welcome to. I picked the five balls because I thought, well, 
in our life journey, we may have at least five opportunities, five chances to rise up. So that's why I picked five balls to symbolize opportunities that we may come across in our lifetime. I didn't make the first part. Second part, I didn't make it. Third one, we just hit my second ball. Sort of story of my life. Didn't go well as I planned, but ups and downs and the downs and downs. And the fourth one, well, I was so close. I thought I was confident to make it just happen. It was close, just good enough, but not perfect. And the last part, I gave everything because it was the last opportunity to make that part. The last opportunity. So I gave everything to that last part. What if we live our life just like that? Lord God, when I pray to you, this might be the last prayer. So I will give everything that I have. Lord God, when I sing this hymn, this might be the last hymn that I offer to you. So I'm going to give everything that I have. Today's worship, today's praise. Lord God, I hope not, but this might be the last. So I'm going to give everything that I have, everything that I am, for your glory as you did for us through your Son, Jesus Christ. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Amen. As we pray for one another, I need to make an announcement that our dearest member and friend, Myrtle Ragg, went to be with the Lord on last Friday afternoon. She was in peace, and now she is in eternal peace with the Lord. Please hold her and her family members in your prayer. Now let us pray to God who alone makes us dwell in safety. Lord, I pray for Myrtle and her family members, Lynn and the rest of the family. Lord, be with them and give them your comfort and your assurance that Myrtle is in eternal peace in the house of God. And her maker is with her all the time. So Lord, her dedication and her commitment to love you and to love a neighbor, and to serve you and to serve her church. And because of her faith, because of her love, many people have touched by your presence through her. So, Lord, continue to be with her as you be with us until we see again and until Jesus comes again. Give your comfort to Lynn and other family members and give them your assurance as well so that we may continue to give you thanks for the promise that you have given and also completed through your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, hear us 
Lord, graciously hear us. Lord, we pray for all who are affected by coronavirus through illness or isolation or anxiety that they may find relief and recovery. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for those who are guiding our nation at this time and the world and shaping national policies that they may make wise decisions. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Special prayer for doctors and nurses and medical researchers and staff that through their skill and insight, many will be restored to health. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for the vulnerable and the fearful, for the gravely ill and the dying, that they may know your comfort and peace. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We command ourselves as we pray for one another and all for whom we pray to the mercy and protection of God. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now let us sing our closing hymn, There is a Light Upon the Mountains. In this time of uncertainty, confusion, and struggle, as the people and the children and servants of God 
Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid, for it is the Lord who goes with you. Your God will not fail you or forsake you. And as we continue to hold on this faith alive and active in our life, may the God bless you and guard you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look kindly on you and give you peace now and forevermore. Amen. Now let us bless each other by singing, May the feet of God walk with you. God bless you.